In the third year of my undergrad, my bachelor gave to me twelve nights of crying, eleven practice quizzes, ten lab reports, nine midterms taken, eight cups of caffeine, seven mental breakdowns, six examinations, five more freaking months, four weeks to go, three hours of sleep, Two presentations and a baby with a shrimp tree. Hey everyone, mostly Ashens. I miss you all. Please come back soon. I have no friends left. So I thought I should put a little scientific tidbit informative thing in my video because, let's face it, who doesn't love science? This is something really cool that I learned in my evolutionary ecology class, and if you don't find it cool, then I hope you get eaten by Daenerys Targaryen's dragons for supper. So pretty much everyone knows the concept of mating systems. A mating system is technically defined as the number of males and females that provide gametes to one reproductive episode. Now this episode can be a mating season, one mating, uh, depending on the species and how they mate. Now there are two basic mating systems, monogamy and polygamy. Monogamy consists of one male and one female in a reproductive episode. Polygamy is a little bit more complicated. In polygamy, we have polygyny, which is one male and more than one female. Then we have polyandry, which is one female and more than one male. And then we have polygynandry, which is more than one female and more than one male involved in a reproductive episode. There's also the concept of a pair bond, which basically means a male and a female that come together and stay together for a period longer than the copulation. So they don't just copulate and go their separate ways, there is some sort of parental investment involved on the part of both the male and the female. Pair bonding in monogamy is fairly rare in mammals as compared to birds because unlike birds, the males of mammals can't really participate in the taking care of the offspring past the copulation, so they can't provide many resources. In some cases, in carnivores, they can help scavenge and get food, but they cannot breastfeed and they cannot nurture the child as it's developing in the womb. Monogamy is common in bird species, on the other hand, because once the female lays the egg, both the male and the female can incubate it, both the male and the female can provide food for the chicks when they hatch, as well as defend the territory. Thus, there's high opportunity for parental investment in both sexes in birds, but in mammals, on the other hand, parental investment opportunity for males is lower than that of the females. So if you observe bird species, a lot of them do have pair bonding. So one female and one male will come together, they will have a nest on a territory, and they will rear their brood together. So for a long time it was thought that birds were very proper monogamous and did not stray until research showed that they were only socially monogamous but were getting action on the side. This is where extra pair copulation and extra pair fertilization or EPC and EPFs come in. So although these birds appear to be socially monogamous, the males will copulate with other females other than their mate and the females will also copulate with other males other than their mate. Now EPCs and EPFs are actually so common that 20 to 30 percent of the offspring and broods have mixed paternity. So that means that the females who laid the eggs were getting some action on the side and 20 to 30 percent of those eggs are not actually the offspring of the father who's raising them. In many species of birds it was found that it was actually the females that actively seek out EPFs. So the whole time I'm sitting there and listening to my prof talk about this, and he's obviously making it sound super scandalous. He's talking about birds being all promiscuous and referring to them as if they were just human. And then the example he gives us is to do with great tits, which are these birds that he always talks about. Can we just talk about how suggestive that name is? Great tits. I'm moody. I'm PMSing. I have nine midterms this semester, which really sucks. I have labs due every week. And then, on top of it all, I apparently have this newfound threat for my mate of high quality. Basically they found that the males that attract many females visitors on the side also have mates that stay at home and don't wander. What this means is that the males are really high quality so their mates don't feel the need to wander to look for any action on the side because they're not going to find anything better. While all the other females want that male because he's just the epitome of awesome genes. You damn birds. So at this point I'm just sitting there making connections between everything I've just learned in birds with humans and I'm freaking out a little bit. 
I mean, I have a fairly high quality mate, if I do say so myself, and I never feel the need to wander. But looking at these blue tits, that also means that by extension, likely a large number of females are attracted to him. So the prof is joking, everyone is laughing, aha, birds are promiscuous, and I'm just sitting here not having a very good time. And to top it off, another experiment found that females that engage in EPF with neighboring males were allowed to feed on their territory. And that male would also scare away predators from the female's territory where she was originally from. So first of all, the mate of the male that's engaging in the EPFs is quite literally getting screwed over by this neighboring female. And then she's also getting shafted because her resources are also going to her because now her mate is letting the other female feed on their territory. How is that even fair? But friends, life is inherently not fair. Do you know why? Because natural selection acts on an individual and not a group level. Therefore, all individual behaviors that are benefiting a group are either directly or indirectly benefiting the individual himself. So Phoebe was right. There's no such thing as a selfless good deed. But I don't really want to end this on a cynical note. So here, watch some Quidditch. Are you allowed to be touching it? Or not? Potter. Put in good effort.